So, uh, so in the meantime, in the spirit of uh, keeping ourselves entertained while the jury actually does all of the hard thinking and hard work, uh, we decided to come up with a, with a, with a small little uh, game. <clears throat> so um, basically today, you guys have been exposed to a whole bunch of very crazy thoughts. And even though some of them were very, very logical, at the end of the day, you could tell that they were completely nuts. Now, of course, this is not a hallmark of bad science. And actually, very often the case is that good science is initially thought of as completely crazy as well. So we thought we would play a game with you. If you, look, um, if you look at your chairs, you have little red and little green papers. All right, so we've made a small selection of publications for you, some of which are completely true and have been published in a peer-reviewed journal, other ones of which we just completely made up and they're absolute lies. And now we're gonna ask you, just based on the title and some figures and some evidence alone, to use your best guess as to whether this actually is a piece of scientific literature that has been public or whether we just completely made it up. Um, where's the clicker? Oh. <coughs> All right. So first on the list, we've got a publication from 2003. We have got the synthesis of the anthropomorphic molecules, the nano Pucian, two nanometer tall humans made out of molecules. They kind of look exactly like this. So this here, this is Nano Kid. He is the basis of the Nano Pucian society, but of course the society itself, it's a very rich society. It's got lots of members. Uh, there's the Nano Athlete, of course. The Nano Scholar makes you, makes you, makes you want to think. There's a Nano Baker and then a Nano Chef. Nano Jester, sure everyone likes that guy. All right. If we had to ask you up front, just raise your cards in the air, of course, green for real paper, red for this is absolute crap. Just give an indication. Wow. All right, this is, this, is, this is hard, but I think I see a lot of red. I see a lot of red, but this paper is completely true. It's really, I would completely suggest you read it. It's, it's got the cutest little nanopucian molecule diagrams from back to front all the time. It's really, really fun. All right. So, so let's, see, uh, let's see if we can get a little bit better at this. All right. So this is, uh, this is about autofluorescence in bacteria isolated from bovine excrement during the full moon. So what these scientists did, over a period of six months on a day-to-day -day basis, they collected samples of large ruminants and analyzed all of their feces in order to find out what kind of bacterial growth was there. And what did they find out? This is completely unexpected, by the way. If they look at these bacteria, the bacteria that come from a time when the moon was full actually autofluoresce. Basically, they glow in the dark. This is gut bacteria. They've never seen the day of light, let alone moonlight before. All right. Cars in the air. Guys, 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 I see so much green. Isn't it obvious? This is complete <laughs> bullshit. All right, all right. Now take a second, yeah? I want, you, I want you just to look at these for a little while. Let them do the work. Do, do some awe if you want. It's okay. They're really cute. All right. So what you're experiencing now is the power of kawaii. Well, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's the Japanese word for cute. <laughs> And what they did in this study is they asked, they asked subjects to do a series. I don't know, do you think they have to go check on them, make sure everything's okay? All right. So what they made their subjects do is do a, a series of tasks, which were very, very complicated, and they had to do them very, very fast. They exposed them to pictures of either kittens and puppies, adult animals, or as a kind of control, pleasant looking food. And what they determined was that only the group that looked at pictures of kittens and puppies significantly improved their scores across the board. All right, is this really published or crap? See, these guys were completely right. Look at you guys, two pictures of kittens and puppies and you're all spot on. That's absolutely brilliant, wow. <laughs> All 
All right, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see if you can, uh, let's see if you can keep this up, right? So, okay, you can see these pictures. These are, these are all pictures drawn by children. And just uh, want you to take some time, look at them, and see if you can pick your favorite one. See if you think that some are nice, some are not so nice, some are better than others. Yeah, you have some kind of general opinion. Well, basically what that means is that you are just as capable as a pigeon. So what these people did is they actually got a whole bunch of pigeons and they trained them to be able to judge art made by kids in the same way humans do. And you could show a pigeon a brand new painting which it had never seen before made by a child and the pigeon would either peck to indicate, yeah, this is a pretty good painting by a kid or do absolutely nothing, in which case it probably kind of looked like the ones on the, on the right over there. All right, has this been published or no? Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go 50-50 on this one, but uh, the ones who said it was really published, <laughs> spot on. Really, I suggest, if you can, to look some of these up, because they are really, really fun. And then, of course, all right, can you guys see it? Can you guys see it? Did you see the snake in the tree? Did you see it quickly? All right, so what a bunch of researchers did in 2012 is they took pictures of forests. Some of them had trees, some of them had snakes. They showed them to test subjects and timed how long it would take these subjects to be able to see either the flower or the snake hidden in the picture. Came to a startling conclusion. Premenstrual enhancement of snake detection in visual search in healthy women. That's right. Premenstrual women are ridiculously fast at finding snakes in the jungle. This doesn't, this doesn't work for flowers anymore. And I'm not really sure what the real world implications of this are. I'm sure there must be something, maybe, maybe Elio, you want to make some kind of business out of this? <laughs> okay, show of cards. Yeah, yeah. Of course, also completely true. <laughs> 